<laughs> Good morning. It's boot camp, so to speak. Actually, that would be a good title for this. Boot camp 101. Actually, it's Proverbs. And uh, one of the things I wanted to do was that in Proverbs, because the time that I'm recording it is usually pretty early. And I would have already recorded this, except for I thought, well, I, you know, well, Lord, you know, I don't want to really get all cleaned up yet. You know, I got to, I don't want to get some things done, you know, I want to jump up and go and do and accomplish some things, you know, pro verbs to go and do, you know, that's kind of what verbs are. They're an action thing, you know, they're like, and I remember when I was uh, in boot camp in the Marine Corps, you know, one of the things that you learned to do was to roll out of bed fast <laughs> because they had a way of waking you up and you were ready for action or <laughs> you learned how quick. So when I was in Dunnigan, uh, helping to renovate and to start a old church that had been around the turn of century back up, um, one of the elders there, a man that, um, was helping to get the church going had gotten me and my uh, pastor friend a hat you know and I don't normally wear khaki hats because I always thought of khakis as some of those wacky khakis that you know are out there you know survivalists that are going hey you know what <laughs> the end of the world's coming so we're going to survive and I kept looking at them going really <laughs> you're gonna do you're gonna survive the end of the world when you're dealing with God <laughs> okay you know take your gun and you know have fun because <laughs> you ain't gonna make it but uh, and if you're a survivalist well praise the Lord go ahead <laughs> not me but anyways because you know I have a tendency of jumping out of bed and running over here and recording something or you know trying to get things posted on the internet because I do a lot of writing that uh, I thought, well, you know, with Proverbs, since that's one of the first things I record, I'm just going to go ahead and put it on and do my little God's Army thing, you know. And, and let's read Proverbs together, you know. We've already started Proverbs 1-1, you know, and that was fun. <laughs> so we're, we're in Proverbs. And in case you didn't know, most of the uh, numbers, you know, whenever you're reading Proverbs, really don't fit. You know, you could have read it through without all the numbers and probably got more out of it. Take the chapters out too and you might even enjoy it more but since it is kind of like one of the normal things that people do we're going to go line by line precept upon precept here a little there a little but anyways praise the lord let's stick with what we're doing and now you know why i wear the hat and look the way i do to know wisdom and instruction to perceive words of understanding in Proverbs, to know wisdom, you know, Proverbs is going to define wisdom for us so that we already understand what wisdom is from a proverbial point of view or from an Eastern point of view. <clears throat> but because God speaks to us by his Holy Spirit, we need to understand what wisdom is for us today. What is wisdom to you? Well, I'm waiting. I don't hear you. Matter of fact, I don't see you. Hmm. Cat got your tongue? Do you know what wisdom is? <laughs> You're not going to answer, are you? Of course not. You're on the other side of the camera. That's kind of like what happens with God. You know, God says, hey, look, I am wisdom. I am wisdom. Not you, not your books, not your understanding, not your mental, intellectual, logical, pragmatic, duality, you know, Western thought, but rather I am wisdom and I'm trying to tell you what wisdom is. So why aren't you answering me? Why aren't you listening? Why aren't you doing the things that I said? You see, that's how God feels about when we think we have wisdom, because a lot of us like to presume that we're wise because we've come to some place of understanding that we think we know what we know. But the Bible says that if any man thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing at all. And in reality, there's more to that than what people presume, because I find that the dumbest people are the smartest ones. And the smartest ones aren't really that too wise in the scriptures. 
rare occasions do exist where I think that a wise man comes along every so often that becomes a sage that he recognizes that in him there is little understanding very little that is of his own knowledge but that he's willing to trust in the Lord to give him whatever it is that he needs in order in that moment to appear as wise because wisdom comes from God you can't get it any other way it's part of God taking the Bible which is his word taking the word of God and causing you to learn it and to understand it in a way that applies to you personally so you really can't get wisdom without God applying his word to you let's be clear on that you can't get wisdom any other way now you can pretend and you can contend and you can argue and you can debate and you can you know take it to God in prayer why don't you just take it to God in reality and talk to him and argue with him about it I have but wisdom is going to be for you that part of your life that you have taken some scripture and really gotten into it and said hey you know what this says trust in the Lord so who's the Lord you know what is trust where do I put my trust do I trust in other things in other words going very much into personal application personal kind of like eating it you know so to speak and making it real so that you know it every moment of your life that you can go you know what I wasn't trusting in the Lord at that time or whatever it may be whatever scripture when it says God so loved the world then do you get to pick and choose who's in the world in other words take that scripture also take John 3 16 as much as you think you know it do you really what about the exceptions to that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not does it say would not or should not see lots of things to look at that's what wisdom is wisdom is looking at it examining it looking at the minutiae and looking at the macro part and then extending it outward to everything that it incorporates meaning you and me so to know wisdom Proverbs is here for you God wants you to apply it to you he wants you to learn and experience him and his word the Word of God the scriptures the Bible so that you would know wisdom and instruction instruction did you know that the Torah is called instructions yeah in Hebrew believe it or not it's not just an idea of the law which is what most Gentiles get out of mosaic law but God also said they were instructions of how you could approach him or in some ways find out you really can't approach him because he's holy that's what the law does it's instructions God gave instructions to the children of Israel if you were going to be my people notice that if there again is wisdom oh well if you're gonna be my people then you ought to do this you know if you're going to be the chosen of God now unfortunately there's a lot of legalists out there that want to take the Ten Commandments and say hey you know what we're gonna take the Ten Commandments and 633 mitzvot and we're gonna do all this stuff and we're gonna make ourselves legalists you know we're gonna to try to fulfill everything that's in there good luck <laughs> if the Jew can't do it what makes you think you can oh wait a minute maybe a Jew did or was that the Son of God or the Son of Man learn wisdom but receive instruction because the Bible is meant to be instructions it's not meant to be a book of do's and don'ts and you're gonna do this and don't and you're gonna go to heaven or hell and you're gonna get bummed out and condemned and you know convicted but rather it's instructions that here's how you live here's what you do in these circumstances here's what happened in these circumstances and here's the consequence of what happened to them because they did this this happened to them so don't do this so that you could do this it's called instructions that's what Proverbs is also they are things to be to do and to experience it's a verb it's an action Proverbs is the book where you want action if you want lights action camera Proverbs is it that's what we're doing make it you 
Make wisdom yours. Make instruction yours. That's what this book is about. To perceive words of understanding. I get it. So if I want to know what I don't know, I can go to Proverbs in order to understand what it was I didn't know so that I could become wise because I'll take the instructions and I'll experience how they work so that I'll gain wisdom so that I will have understanding. A, B, C. Wow, right there in Proverbs 2. Are you kidding me? You mean that if I follow the instructions in order to get wisdom, that I will have understanding. Frankly, it's pretty simple. Now, there are people that are going to come along, and they always do. Oh, well, you can't understand the Bible from a Western point of view. You have to have an Eastern mindset, and you have to use your left brain instead of your right brain, because we don't want to use the back brain, because the forebrain is more emotional than it is somewhere in any brain. Oh boy, talk about bird brain. Jeez, if God is giving us a book, and he's giving us wisdom, and he's giving us understanding, and he's telling us these are instructions, don't you think that that's what we are proverbial doing? That we are going to action as part of our lives? These are actions we pro or we want to do. These are actions that we are going to make applicable to our lives. Hmm. I think today, Proverbs, you want to know what to do, and all you got to do is read number two. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive words of understanding. You will understand. Yes, you will. If you don't, watch the video. <laughs> Believe me, if you don't understand it, hey, you write me and I'll write you a page on it. Okay, maybe a book on it. I lived Proverbs. I mean, there was a time in my life where literally I went out of my way and eliminated, boy, you name it. You, I got rid of television. I got rid of radio. I got rid of all these stupid things, you know, that you could say became quicker. No, I didn't go kosher. <laughs> but I did apply certain things when God wanted me to learn something. I wanted to really get into the get gist of it and see, hey, could this be applicable in modern age? You know, and could we make it work? And in those days, yes. In these days, you sure can, but, you know, you may not want to because there's a lot of benefits to some of the things that we have in our modern world. But the point being is that in Proverbs, it applies to all hemispheres, eastern, western, northern, southern, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. It's talking about instructions. It's talking about wisdom. It's talking about understanding words because that's how God talks to you. In words he uses the Word of God to communicate to you his word spoken to you and as you apply it to yourself as it becomes real and you know it in your head your heart your mind your soul your strength your body all that good stuff you know in your life daily experiences then it becomes wisdom it becomes something you can share with others and the only reason I'm teaching Proverbs the only reason I'm applying it in a study or a devotional because I've lived it and Proverbs will change your life it will cause you to be wise and in one day someone might even call you a sage if you follow Proverbs